morning. Housekeeping first. Everybody got stickers? I think Kavita has all the rest of these. Tomorrow we're going to have an SEO Moz meetup upstairs. Uh, we're having meetups all over the world now. It's just to get SEOs together. Um, Mozers are folks who read SEO Moz or show up, but not just Mozers are invited. Everybody where you can meet good friends, colleagues, and trust me, I know how you need it. How many here have parents who are still waiting for you to get a job? Mine is, yeah. <laughs> I sent my mother something. She grew up in England, and uh, so I figured, she's now living in the States, but um, I figured I'd send her something that kind of connected a little bit with her. So I sent her an article that indicated that SEO Moz had just landed an account with the BBC. We were pretty impressed. We were also listed as the metrics that said that the British government websites sucked. Right. So I thought that was pretty cool. They actually used Moz Rank and Domain Trust and things like that and pointing out that the British government wasn't doing its job and you couldn't find out where to get, I don't know, driver's licenses and things like that and they should do a better job. So we were pretty thrilled. I sent this to her. She sends it back to me and she says, that's wonderful, dear. Um, maybe they'll become a customer? <laughs> yeah, okay, so um, <laughs> moms. <laughs> so I have never heard a keynote on analytics before. This is a groundbreaker. Um, and I've also rolled up my sleeves, as you can see, and I've taken off my jacket. We're going to get down to some hard work. This is about analytics. It's not analytics 101. I'm going to do my best to explain the pieces along the way. If I use three-letter acronyms and so on, I promise to explain them. Um, in, back in the States, we have uh, the Boeing Company. I think you guys know about those guys, right? They're big enough. And, uh, and they land down at the airport all the time. They have an entire book of these three- and four-letter terms. They're called ERBAs. Easily recognized Boeing acronyms. And you'll excuse me, but that was not easily recognized for me. So I'll promise to do the same. There we go. Analytics is dead. Long live analytics. Yes. So while we're waiting, I'm going to tell you how I got to be SEO mom. I was sitting around in about nine, well, excuse me, 2006, I think, 2006 to 7. I was at a Google meeting on spam where we had people from all over the world sitting around the table, about 16, 17 of us. Matt Cutts was there, a few other guys. Um, Adam Lasnick and so on, and they had passed a paper around to each one of us, and it had a list of the other speakers and the countries they came from and a little bit about what they do. So they got around to about seven or eight of us, and then it was my turn, and Adam went, <gasps> and I went, yeah, you did. They put down Rand's mom. <laughs> How many of you guys have children? Right. So when they're about one or two, they have a little play date, right? They meet somebody else with another family, and they play, and they have a good time, right? And that's it. You've lost your identity. You're somebody else's mom or dad, right? And then they get to through high school, and they get off to the university, and you get your identity back. People start looking at you, not your kid, and they don't say, oh, you're Sean's dad. You're, you know, so-and-so's mom, right? Suddenly, you have a name again. Pretty cool. If your kid gets famous, all bets are off. Okay. <laughs> so I bought Matt, randmom.com. And then I guess it was about two or three months later, I was at PubCon, and I got up the escalator to the top floor of the, you know, the area where the conference was about to happen, and somebody shouted out, hey, that's SEO mom. And that was it. It was all over. I'm going to talk a little bit about analytics to begin with. Yes, analytics is painful. It's difficult. It's a bunch of charts and graphs. We keep generating this stuff. But data is not information, and analytics is not a data report. It's not a report at all. So how many folks here are involved in analytics at all? Are you doing analytics? OK. And are you um, reporting to somebody else with those analytics? Or OK. And how many of you are managing the analytics yourself? OK. When I leave, I hope more and more of you are going to be managing those analytics yourself. If you can dictate what happens from those analytics, you're going to be in a lot better position. Not just in a position of power, if you will, but a position to direct the um, future success of your company, the company you work for, or your clients' companies, whichever it is. OK, we're ready to roll. Thank you. So it is not about analytics, you know, lots of pretty pie charts and all of that. It's just data. It's just information. And it's complicated. If I added four more dials, could I, di you know, could I drive this thing any better? Right? We have cars. We need drivers. We need serious information. How do I know what's going wrong here? I've got all this stuff going on, and even if I could read it, how could I tell quickly if something was going wrong? Well, that's a trick question. Red light will show up. OK. Reporting is not analytics. This is reporting. This is you know, very nice. We've got some guys, you know, we're spending a certain amount of money on PPC here and so on and so forth. But in itself, 
it doesn't tell us anything. It just told us what happened. Okay? There's always a seesaw effect. If I go back here and I see that I got 64 visits at 494, you know, click and so on and so forth, I can see what I spent for it. Or I got more visits and, you know, a cost per click of this and that. It didn't tell me how many conversions I got. Suppose I bid more and I pay more for the click through rate. All right, will I get more conversions? It's always a seesaw effect. You have to balance the metrics. It's easy. Okay. CTR, which is click through rate versus position. This is on Google. We talked about this yesterday if you were in the analytics uh, class there. Right? Drops right off. Click through in the first position. Whoa, way down there, right? Well, what does it really mean? Are you searching for cars? You might want a picture of a car. You might be a five year old. You might be, I don't know, it doesn't matter, right? There's no intent to purchase. You want intent to purchase, you're going to get further on down the line. The highest converting um, metrics and so on, or the highest converting click-through rates are going to be words of four and five words, you know, searches for four and five words. At the moment, worldwide, it will change over time. Okay? Higher bids does not necessarily mean higher cost. Same sort of thing works on Facebook. Suppose I have a number of Facebook pages and I've got a certain amount of click-through rate and then I change what I'm doing, I bid higher or lower, a higher bid does not necessarily mean I'm going to pay more for the conversion. It might mean that my ad will show up higher because I'm willing to pay more, but then if the market is targeted enough and my text is targeted enough, I will have fewer click-throughs and I will end up with a higher conversion rate. Opposing metrics. See the graph in the blue and the green? Nice, clear stuff. It's why we put graphs on all this stuff. Right? Opposing metrics. Every time you do something, there is an opposing, was it equal and opposite effect. It works. You can think of it as linear programming. This is complex stuff. If you have a series of inputs into your system, and we have an ever-expanding series of inputs into our analytics systems, right? you have to figure out which ones are weighted in which ways. So bear with me now as we get through this. I'm not only listening now to how many people clicked through in the organic search results or how many people clicked through in the pay-per-click results, but I'm also checking to see how many people are coming to me from Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and how that affects my search rankings, which might affect or not affect the click-through rate. And I really should be checking to see whether it was the organic search result that I've been working on in my standard SEO campaign to get my website's homepage up there, or whether it was a Twitter result that somebody clicked through on. Right? You get the idea? It's getting more and more complicated. Okay. Now get this. We have divided attention, segmented attention. Guy last night was talking about two cell phones, right? How many people have two cell phones? Right? Okay, keep your hand up. Well, let's see. How many people have um, a traditional computer? You know, a desktop? Okay. Keep your hand up if you also have a laptop. Okay, most of you guys have laptops then. So, all right, everybody hang on there. Keep your hand up if you have a laptop. Now, keep your hand up if you have a laptop and a cell phone. If you don't have a cell phone, put it down. Okay? Take a look around, guys. Everybody's got laptops and cell phones. Now, so, uh, how many people have laptops, cell phones, and an iPad? Okay, quite a number of you. How many people have laptops, cell phones, and a TV? Okay, you get the idea? Crowdsourcing. You get that right away. Take a look around. How do I know whether you were watching my TV ad and so you made the phone call and made a purchase, or whether you were checking it out on the iPad, maybe while you were watching TV, or you had talked to somebody who sent you back a, twi a tweet that told you whether or not they recommended it, so when you were watching the ad, you were now paying attention, so then you picked up the phone number, but you plugged it into your cell phone, and along the way, maybe you made the, I don't know, a wrong entry or something, so you checked out the name of the store on their cell phone. How do I know? And who gets the click? Who gets the attribute? How do you weight it? Complexities keep going. Metrics decomposition, right? It's always about margin versus volume. I'm going to make a certain amount of money. I'm going to sell something for, say, 1,000. I'm going to make a margin, which means my net profit, or at least adjusted gross profit, of approximately 100. So I've got this 100 on my spread here. This is what I got to play with. So we have a 100, whether it's rupees or dollars or whatever, it, it makes no difference, okay? 100. So 
I go to my cost per click, and I set some kind of a number. And I can see what my click-through rate is, cost per click, CPC. See, now follow it down to CTR, click-through rate. And that click-through rate will be influenced by not only what I bid, because that'll tell you how much higher up or lower down I'm going to be on the page, but also the keywords that I bid on. If I didn't do my keyword research properly, then I'm bidding on stuff that isn't likely to convert. Right? The ad itself, including the image or the headline text or the offer, right? and the offer could be you know, free french fries on Wednesday or you know, whatever it is. It could be a good one or a bad one. And by the targeting. So if I target the market properly, then I've done a good job, especially in things like Facebook, where you target attributes of people. right? But if I've cho chosen bad attributes, again, it will dilute my CPC, my cost per click. It's affected by all that stuff. Okay? And the volume. My conversion rate is balanced by how much I've paid and who's coming through. And it's influenced by both this offer and, oops, the landing page. And often, the people with the landing page don't have the same authority as the people making the ads. It's not the same folks. OK, so things are getting muckier. So far, you guys are drowning in all of the data so far. You're getting an idea of how much there is out there. So what we do is we look for coding of metrics. We try to come up with things that say, gosh, if something happens, I want to know about it now. So we put that light on back in the panel at the airline, at, at the airplane, right? We put some lights on. If I have a decrease of 20%, it's going to turn red. Got the red. Okay. Increase, it's going to turn green. So I can see a few things here. For example, we move from position five to position three. Let's take a look. Here it was. Position five to position three for one of our ads. Does it mean anything? Well, it could mean a number of different things. It's the analysis that makes all that difference. If you don't have intelligent eyes behind the report, all you know is something good happened. It's like, cool, we went from five to three. That must be good, right? We went up. Not necessarily. Maybe you're bidding too much. Maybe your organic search efforts are such that you're now ranking in the top two or three or one or whatever for your organic search. And maybe you can just start reducing the cost over here, and this could drop down. Maybe it doesn't belong up there. Maybe you're wasting your money and cannibalizing your efforts. Right? Maybe this ad is targeting your brand name and cannibalizing all oh, your search marketing efforts. You're paying twice for things. Right? Maybe the ad was really good, and it was a really good offer, but the offer is too expensive, and it's draining your resources. Could be a lost leader. Figure it out. Okay? You can see all the other things, whether it's red, blue, green, yellow. The you know, question is, what does it really mean? So where do you focus on this stuff? Okay. How do we know whether the direct email had the effect, the auto emails, the, you know, the landing pages, events that go on there? And so when people don't just show up and buy, they go through this AIDA funnel. Again, we talked about that yesterday if you were over at the analytics session, right? Awareness, interest, desire, and action. So where do you focus? You focus on those things that are bubbling up, and then you apply analysis to it on a regular basis. Okay, campaign management. There are good tools out there. You better have drivers. Unjustified reports, absolutely useless. So what do you start? You ask, so what? Right? You understand the concept of the metric decomposition. You consider whatever is actionable. What do I do about it? All right? What you really want to know is what do I do about it? And then you demonstrate, you consider what is actionable there, right? And you demonstrate the impact of the metrics analysis and action. Now let's get deeper into how this stuff would work. I have a friend who says about analytics, there are lies, damned lies, and then there are statistics. This is about statistics. Okay? It's easy to make bad decisions, right? And have the data lie to you about it. You don't even expect it to happen, but it does every time. You can choose metrics on any of these kinds of reports that will support whatever it is you're trying to promote, whether you want to spend more on your PPC or more on your SEO or whatever it is. There are arguments that are rational and reasonable on all sides. Okay? But how do you know what's going to tell you what you really need to know is what do we do about this stuff and how do we make more money? Okay? So if people are watching, as I said, TV and their iPad and their cell phones, 
how do you know what they're thinking about and when, and which report is going to be accurate for you. The purpose of analytics, of course, is to decide what to do about it, right? But you can think of it as, we talked about before, linear programming problem. What you want to do is maximize sales subject to the constraints of your budget. Maximize your sales subject the to the constraints. So think of it this way. Once you've placed efforts in, let's talk about SEO as opposed to PPC for a moment. You've placed a certain amount of efforts into your SEO campaigns, all right? You've got a number of people working on it. That's one cost structure. You have a number of dollars that refer to both those people and to things like the social media or um, outsourcing or whatever it is that you've paid to do here, maybe PR firms, et cetera. Okay? And the third piece, then, is to balance it against a particular metric that says we still made money. Okay? Cost of your product, adjusted, excuse me, the price of your product, that's what the customer's going to pay you, adjusted price of your product, which is your cost, right? And then you have that wedge in between that says this is the money we're going to play with, okay? Certain amount of it has gone to these folks over here. Now, you're going to run a report that indicates whether or not the click-through rates on particular places that you've touched your consumer are paying enough to make up that difference, okay? Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, any number of industry vertical search marketing social media sites, right? Sorry, not search marketing sites, social media sites, okay? And the organic search listings. When they get there, you need to track not just the first time they show up or the last time they show up. Both of those are completely useless, right? A lot of people are working on last click attribution, and if you do that, Again, you will dilute the value of all your stuff because the last time they show up is when they search for your brand and probably also click on one of your ads. Right? But if you only start with search, and the first, excuse me, then you may say, all right, so SEO had a lot to do with it because that's the first time they ever touched. They you know, stopped by at a search engine, they looked for a product, and they showed up. Okay? But you're not giving the proper credit to the lift that was given by all the social media stuff. And this is, I think, where the pain point is for a lot of people. What is the value of the social media efforts that you do? Because your customers are saying, how much per lead will close the deal? All right? An awful lot of folks I talked to yesterday were saying their customers are saying, how much do you charge per lead? You don't want to be paid on cost per lead. There are too many touch points along the way. How do you demonstrate that? Okay? So, I'm going to start with one piece, and you're going to say, the guys showed up here, and we followed the clicks through. All right? They had a Twitter click. They stopped by, and the Facebook had sent them. We can see that uh, there was a spike in interest even on SEO during a time that we promoted something, so there was a special. Or we had an article in the local newspaper, so that was offline. And that sent spikes through the web as well. It's becoming interesting. Now we just talked about something that happened offline. Okay. And then we keep on going until finally the guy is going to close the deal. Yesterday I mentioned a, an example by Avinash Kaushik who said that when Expedia added a save your session, they increased their closing rate, right, their conversion rate, by more than 17% in just three months. Okay. So again, how do we determine what it was that made that happen? How did they understand that from the statistics they were seeing? What they saw was that people were coming through with the same kind of searches again and again and again. Right? Not necessarily an advertisement, but an organic search even. Or they would return to the same Facebook page and then come back through. In other words, they were approaching from the same angles all the time. What they were trying to do was to get to the point where they'd left off last time and they weren't getting there. They just kept getting back to the Expedia homepage. So they saved a session, and instead of starting from scratch in the research that you'd been doing on whatever trip you wanted to take, if you already had your airline tickets but you're now going to choose a hotel, it was already saved for you. You could move along. Okay. Save people a lot of time. It also reduced the number of times that people had to show up at the site because they didn't have to start again from scratch. Okay. That's actionable analytics. It can tell you what's going on, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get a red flag immediately. It says, holy cow, something's wrong. You have to read it carefully. Okay. So I'm going to move 
on to where you guys are. All right. This is an image that basically says we have a number of touch points for our customers, right? They're pretty easy. You can see where they are. All right. And you've attributed a bit of the click to whatever's going on in there. It goes into a shopping cart. Cool. But in truth, if you put an equal attribution into all the times that you've reached them, you'd fill up a glass and you'd say, okay, that's how they really got there. They didn't just get an email campaign. They didn't just catch us on the organic SERPs. We didn't just run that ad in Facebook. Let's give equal attribution all around. Pretty good. We fill it up. But then we put on what a friend of mine likes to call the UV layer, the ultraviolet layer, right? And it's a little difficult to see what's going on. What you're saying is there aren't just things online, right? and this is the crux of it, there aren't just things online sending traffic to you, there are things offline sending traffic to you. It's that television we talked about that comes along with the iPad and the iPhone and the cell phone, and you're all sitting on the sofa at the same time doing that, and maybe you've got a magazine next door to you. Oh boy. So how do I know if you read the magazine article or whether it was the television commercial or the radio commercial you heard on the way home, or maybe your friend talked to you, and that's the killer one you really can't tell about the friends. Now what? And it gets more complicated from that. All of the touch points you get are really about people talking to each other. And at the moment, we don't have any analytics programs to talk about how to meld the online and offline attribution. We can help a little bit. This is how it works. If you take a look at, well, let's start this way. You know what a black hole is? in the universe, right? It's a place where the light just sucks right in, you can't see it. But by its very definition, you can tell that it's there. It's a little bit the same way here. All right? It takes a bit of guts to run such a test, but if you run it, it works. Okay? What you'll have is a standard amount of stuff going on on a particular landing page. You know where it sits in your organic search. You're going to have advertisements in PPC. You might have another advertisement over at Facebook. Right? And you'll be tweeting about it on a regular basis for two to three weeks, say. Now you have yourself a benchmark. Right? Run an ad campaign outside the web. Make it print, TV, radio. Your choice. Throw it out there and see what happens. The offline will lift the online. Okay? We know about that. We know that offline lifts online the other way around. We also know it works backwards. Right? If you have absolutely no advertising whatsoever, okay, you'll sell a certain amount of product. Whatever advertising you add to it is known as lift. Some more product will be added. So in this case, if you have some stuff going online and all we're tracking are the clicks so far, if it's click, we're happy, right? We got analytics on that. But if it doesn't have a click, if I recommend something to you, right, then we don't have an action on it but we can start to measure it by its very absence. Okay? So one, benchmark what you've got. Right? This is the best we have until these programs get better at tracking all the stuff we're gonna need, and it'll take a year or two before this happens. Okay? As I said, this is stuff we're not really even talking about you know, in the deepest circles of how to manage these analytics, but here we can do this, all right? The first thing you do is determine where your benchmark is today, and determine what the lift is every time you put in another piece. All right? Tracking everything online, you want to keep that stable. Now, if you don't put an advertisement outside, you will sell X amount, and if you do put an advertisement outside, you'll do something else. Now, how do you know what people are talking about to each other and how often you're being referred? Fortunately, we can start tracking that because the conversations we have offline are showing up more and more frequently online as part of Twitter and Facebook. All right, yesterday, did you count how many tweets we had on CAS 11? Okay, I didn't either. Did anybody? Okay, so you guys were a, um, what is it called, a trending topic. Okay, that's pretty hot. Do you know how noisy you have to be to be a trending topic? Okay, but you guys are the Linkarati. You guys are the guys who know how to tweet. That's why you can be a trending topic. So again, we just skewed the play. There's not that many of us here. We don't have a million people here. But it worked because we made more noise than everybody else. Okay. Similarly, what you're going to be able to find is the amount of noise in Twitter 
and Facebook conversations, recommendations versus you know, uh, things that are against you, if you will, and don't like the product, negative comments. Okay? And then you'll be able to determine how that affects both your click-through rate and your conversion rates by its absence or its presence. That's how you start to measure social media. Okay? Look at the standard stuff and then see what happens when you affect the noise level. Okay. Now what I'd like to say is we're going to have an actual case study here. You guys were trending topic yesterday, number two, all throughout the subcontinent of India. 1.2 billion people. Okay. Not everybody is on the web. Not everybody uses Twitter. And not everybody is going to be here next year. But I would suggest that because of that, you're going to get a lift in interest in what's going on next time. Right? And the reason is your target market is online, on Twitter, and on these things. Right? If you know your target market, you'll be able to track exactly what's going to bring you lift. Right? If she's not tracking what's going on in terms of the talk in Twitter, she'd just say, well, gosh, they were looking for my brand in my advertisement, and I got more click-through rates. And so, of course, uh, my um, quality score went up, and now I'm doing better in my PPC ad. This is fictional. It had nothing to do with her PPC ad, and it had nothing to do with where ClickAsia Summit is going to sit in the organic SERPs. It has to do with the noise that got made yesterday. Okay? And that one spiked and affected, as you can see, these kind of little bubbles of things that happen. Right? What we're trying to say is everything has another action and reaction. Okay? So the difference in the lift over interest in Click Asia Summit for now 12 is going to be seriously affected by the amount of noise that's made today. Is there something you'd like to tell people right now? Um, Click Asia, right? C A S 11, tweet. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what she'd like to say. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Oh, it's okay. <laughs> right, it was just, now's your time to make an ad, right? It will significantly affect the number of people who are aware of it, okay, and significantly affect her click-through rates and her conversion rates. Okay. We continually talk about tracking all the sources of the clicks. We know there's a tremendous amount of noise inside the data, right? Trying to get a signal out of there is becoming ever more complicated. What we don't talk about is how to work online and offline together. A couple of your companies in Canada did this. They're, um, in the United States, you can't do this test, by the way. I don't know if you can do that here. It's called collusion in the United States, and it's forbidden. Competing beer companies, major beer companies in Canada, all got together and said, the advertising is costing us a lot of money. Let's all agree not to advertise for one year. But we all have to really stick to it. Otherwise, you know, it's not a fair game. Right? We're going to agree not to advertise at all for one year, and we'll save all that advertising money. All of us can make more money. Good deal. Everybody shook hands. They went away, and they did it. But after a few months, they had to trash it and go back. Because it turns out they were not simply advertising against each other. If you're not in front of the consumer's eye and sound and whatever, right, ear and so on, the actual consumption of all beer went down significantly. So what was the purpose of the marketing, and what did we get out of that data? Right, we thought that we were advertising against different beer companies. The answer is no. You are advertising to increase interest in the product itself, generically the product itself. And when it is not in front of the consumer, they think about it less. On a much broader scale, how would that speak to things like politics? Right. Suppose you're not selling anything that's tangible, that, that has a, a price on it. Right. If you, as a politician, are not in front of your constituency on a regular basis, your likelihood of being elected next time is significantly less. But if you, as politicians, plural, don't speak to your people, plural, and they don't think about government, your turnout for voting is going to be a whole lot less. And we'll all be better off. <laughs> In the United States, we say that too. We say no man's life, liberty, or pursuit of happiness, which is part of our Constitution, right, is vouchsafe, or safe, right, when Congress is in session. <laughs> so yes, we might be all a whole lot better off for it. 
but it does speak to much broader things. What do we want on the minds of our children, adults, etc.? What do we want in the minds of the world? Whatever it is we put out in the general you know, news, if you will, online, offline, and otherwise, is what's going to be on their minds. Okay. So broader issues at stake. But what we're talking about today is the future of analytics and analytics software. And what I'm telling you is essentially no signal is a signal in itself. Listen to carefully again. You have a standard playground of all of the kinds of clicks you can check along the way online. All of the social media stuff, the search marketing, the uh, organic search marketing, and the pay-per-click. And on the other piece, you have all the stuff that's going on offline. And at the moment, it's silent in our analytics. We don't understand how this might affect the offline sales and how offline might affect online sales. But we do know what happens. How many folks have run a search campaign where people flood into stores and create more lift? Come on, you guys must have done this, right? And your customer called up or your boss called up and basically said, ah, oh, so nothing happened, right? It's like, they got all the sales over here and they thought they're making money only in the real store and you guys didn't do anything. Nonsense. It affected that. We need to track that sort of thing. It will come over more and more. But you can tell, right, if a store is making sales of a product and then you start running stuff online and more sales get made at the store, you've got to get that number out of people. Right? If you've got a customer with a brick and mortar store and you're not getting those numbers, you have no control. Okay? If you're reporting to those kinds of guys, it's got to be part of what you're telling them. If I give you, no, if I take a dollar from you and I give you back ten dollars, you're going to play that game all day long. Right? But if you do that and I give you back ten bucks and you're going to give me another buck, this time I'm going to give you back nine bucks. You'll still play the game, sure. And then I'll give you back eight, and then seven, and so on. Right? At some point, at one, one to one, it's like, no, I'm not playing the game anymore. It's just not worth it. We're just trading dollars. Right? So at what point do you decide, I'm going to put money into an effort, and I see some ROI coming back out of it? There will be people who say, well, I have to have a 70% margin here, because that's my overhead cost, and so on. And they'll drop down, and they'll pay it just until you give them seven bucks back for every buck that you've given them, right? Somewhere around there. And then they say the rest of it was cost of goods and now I've filled my whole 10 and we're good to go. But suppose you overspent your budget and the click-through rate got better and the conversion rate got better, and you were actually making more sales. And you think you're bidding towards this number of the seven bucks over the, the dollar, right? And it's just, it makes no sense. It has to be numbers in relation to everything else. So you'll need to know, if I spend a certain amount on these three things and I make that many sales, what happens if I add the fourth item? What happens if I take away item number two? And there's your black hole. Whether it's online or offline, there's your black hole. You're gonna take away number two. And there'll be no signal coming in there, right? So that's the sign in itself. What happened to the sales over there? If nothing happened to it, number two goes away. Email campaigns, not useful, sorry. Nothing happened. That's never true. <laughs> Email campaigns are usually pretty powerful. Right? But they're not the only thing that happens. Make sure that you're covering all of the grounds and understand that analytics programs, whether it's web trends, Omniture, um, anybody, they're just not covering this stuff yet. You're going to have to test the markets on your own by making sure you have solid information about how all of your channels work online together and then testing to see what happens outside the market. Okay. I'm going to call it early and I'm going to ask for questions because the complexities of signals and lack of signals and so on can get a little hefty here. Anybody? Yes, sir. Yeah, please just get the mics to you. Sure. Uh, just before the question, I know everybody uh, is early to leave after mm -hmm. this. I have just a couple of uh, housekeeping uh, announcements. Uh, one is that the hall is going to be split into two, so please take your belongings when you leave after the keynote. Do take that time to visit the expo, which is happening at Salsit 1 and 2, just where the coffee and tea is being served. Uh, if you are coming tomorrow for the uh, workshops, I request you to do your selections uh, during lunchtime for your workshop so that we are prepared for you tomorrow morning. 
And lastly, the most important thing that you need at a conference also nowadays is Wi-Fi. So if you still haven't got it and you'd, uh, you'd like to get a Wi-Fi username password, please contact the registration desk. There's a gentleman there called Ronobir. He'll be able to help you out with a username password for that. Okay, now back, sorry sir. I took no your problem. time, but back to you. And don't Hi. forget to tweet uh, for Kavita. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Kedar. Hi. Um, I have a, a specific query that uh, when you're starting off a new business, uh, and you have all this possibility in front of you of yeah. actually trying out for the signal, no signal, and creating your benchmarks. Uh, what are the first things that you ought to do? I mean, what do you recommend we do first so that because you have a brand new website and you're looking for the first benchmark, yes. what am I going to look for? Yes. Should, the should first I thing go? you want to do is get listed. Okay. Even if you're on page 50, you want to be there. Okay. Right? Yes, so course. you want to say, okay, Google has indexed my page. Now you have a benchmark. Where do I sit? The second thing I do is take a look at, and this is for standard SEO, the first thing I want to do is make sure I've got my SEO going, right? It takes a while to plant that seed, so let's start immediately. All right, so, so first I want to make sure I'm listed, so I make sure I have a, you know, a site index and, and stuff like that, and I've submitted and so on. All right, we're good. Now, say I'm on page 22. I'm going to look at the guys who are on page one, all of them. I'm going to determine which ones are the same ones, so indented stuff or different listings for the same guy and so on and so forth. Pull that down, there's usually like three or four that I'm going to really compete with. Then I'm going to throw those into my stuff, into Open Site Explorer and, and um, uh, SEO Moz, and I'm going to go figure out what have they got that I haven't got. Because they're in as you know, the truth of what you're after, right? So, okay, this guy's got a million and a half links. It's going to take quite a while for me to catch that guy. But what do these other guys have as well? We'll keep going. What can I achieve today? So those are the kinds of things I look at. Get myself in first and then go find out what the big guys have. If it's not terribly competitive, of course, it could be, well, he has 120 links. Where did he get those links from? It isn't just important that you have links in there. It's important that the value of those links be significant. So the domain trust of the place it's coming from to you is important, right? Is he getting them from directories, or is he getting them from the, I don't know, the, the India time, Times of India, right? You want the Times of India. And one from the Times of India is worth like 10 from silly directories. So let's go for the good guys, right? <laughs> Might as well make it useful. So you look at those kinds of benchmarks. Then I look at the next page, and I'd say, well, the least costly place for me to do any kind of advertising today is going to be in the social media spaces. So I open myself up a Facebook page for my company. Right? And I talk about what's going on. And I create an event. Uh, maybe it's a webinar or something like that. I'll start pushing it out. But that's essentially cost free except for the time. So make sure you've got your time numbers in there because there's only so many hours in the day. Right? I'll start with that and then I'll see how it begins to affect. Right? I'll open a Twitter account and I'll start tweeting. I'm tweeting to nobody except maybe mom, if you're lucky, right? But over time, you want to track the metrics. How's that improving? Right? You can actually contact other people who are on Twitter who are following your competitors or in the space discussing the same subjects. You get in there and discuss the same subjects. You do an at so-and-so, and that so-and-so might start following you. It's little bits and pieces for the very beginnings of what you've got. But over time, a solid community will spread the word for you and will do that kind of social media stuff so that it's less uh, work on your actual staff. So let me see if I got this right. So when you start a new business, the first thing you're looking for is your page ranking. Then you go for the top two or three. You find out what you they're do doing right. Stuff. You do. So do you start benchmarking immediately so that you have some kind of, at what levels do you say, okay, now this is my base from where mm -hmm. I will start calculating my lift, if at all mm -hmm. I get some, or my drag. Right. If I would I'm also not look at the entire, um, if you're looking at, at ranking in the organic search market, is that what you're after? Right, organic search. Okay. Look at the entire circle of the organic search ranking factors. SEO Moz publishes them free of charge every two years. The next one's coming out in a couple of months. Um, the 2010 is out there, and if you want to email me, I can send it to you, but you can find it. I mean, just go to SEO Moz and you know, type it in, search. Um, we're looking for the SEO Moz ranking factors. It will tell you, you know, this much is about links, and that much is about content, and here's the other 243 signals that they're looking at, and so on. You get a relative sense of the important stuff. So if all of that's about links, well, how much of that are inbound, outbound, the link structure, the URL structure, what are all the other stuff I have to know about? That's learning search marketing. And then, of course, your big question is, do I want to do this all by myself, or do I want to hire somebody out? Do I want to learn enough so that I can manage somebody who's working for me who does all of that kind of stuff? You'll make that decision along the way. Okay. Hi, Jillian. Uh, Hello? Right here, right here. <laughs> 
I, <laughs> whoever has the mic. So I, I noticed that uh, statement you made about reporting not being analytics. Reporting on? Not being analytics. Yes, uh, could you that's correct. Some, could you give some examples of that, please? Well, we constantly make these, um, you know, uh, charts and graphs and things. Let's see if, can we go back up on this? Yes, we can. Here we go. Okay, that's not analytics. That's a chart. We tend to make these charts again and again and again. They look like this. They look like that. And they look like that, right? Analytics itself requires a driver. A car is not, you know, the journey. It requires a driver to understand how to do it, right? If you're in search marketing, you're constantly trying to defend your position as a search marketer, right? Analytics is the way to do that. It isn't just generate the reports that says, okay, so we rose in the SERPs three spaces for this particular keyword. The question is, did that keyword produce any conversions? Right? And what else was listening in there, you know, or, or, uh, or making noise in there, excuse me, so that this was affected? All right? Why did we do that? Well, I'll tell you why you did it. It's because, you know, Click Asia Summit 11, CAS 11, was a trending topic yesterday on Twitter. You think it's not going to be in the SERPs this morning? I wish we had it live, because I would throw it right up and go see what happened. All right? So everybody check it. Somebody tell me. <laughs> but, that's what analytics is versus a report. The report says we rose three spaces. The analytics says, okay, so there was a social media event. It was an offline event. We all got together here. We were impressed with what happened, so we started tweeting. Now they went up. Now next year, they're going to get that many more visitors and whatever. But the killer is the ticket prices don't mean a thing. It's all around the corner, the guys who bought the booths. The real question is, is it going to blow one more company out of the water to say, holy cow, there was some serious stuff going on down here, and we want to get in front of that target market. These are the guys who want to buy our services, products, software, et cetera. We're going to sponsor this event next year. 